Tires for construction and mining equipment are truly giant-sized. They can be twice the height of a human being and weigh thousands of pounds. These giant tires also come with a hefty price tag. Just one can cost more than an average family sedan. Giant tires are made to carry heavy loads in conditions that are seriously off-road, like mining and construction sites. To make giant tires, they feed rubber into a powerful mixer. They add sulfur and antioxidants to boost the rubber's durability, as well as recycle pieces of used tires. At the top of the mixer, they add carbon black in measured amounts. It's an oil byproduct that helps bind everything together. The mixing generates heat, which softens the rubber, making it doughy. The rubber dough then falls between rollers that squeeze it into a sheet. The process is called milling. They slice the sheeted rubber and feed it back into the machine several times. This repeated milling essentially needs the rubber to give it the right consistency. Once the rubber has been sufficiently processed, they feed it to a conveyor. A wheel rolls over the rubber to impress the date and identification number onto it. The rubber then winds through a tank of soapy water. As it exits, it falls over hangers that move it through a dryer. A soapy residue remains, keeping the layers from sticking together as they await more processing. They write the ID number on a sample of the rubber and tag the production run with the same number. This signifies that testing is underway. They tuck the test sample in a canister and send it up a chute to the lab. Once it's confirmed the rubber has the right characteristics, it's ready to be made into the various components of a giant tire. At the next station, dozens of steel cords unwind into a machine. Each cord is made of numerous steel threads, and each thread is brass plated. These steel cords will be used to fortify the processed rubber. The cords enter a machine called an extruder. It grinds and heats some of the processed rubber and then forces it around the steel cords to encase them. The result is what's known as steel belted rubber. They cut several of the steel belted strips on an angle and fuse them together. This exposes steel cord around the edges so hot rollers seal them with rubber. The steel belted rubber will make the tires more resistant to punctures. But they make the tires basic structure from rubber coated nylon cord. They cut the nylon rubber ply to a specific length. Workers then piece several of these sheets together to form a loop. The pieces adhere because uncured rubber is naturally tacky. And a machine rolls the loop to the correct size. They layer more of the nylon rubber ply in a crisscross fashion to add strength. The machine that helps size the loop also applies a thin layer of ordinary rubber between each crisscrossed layer. This thickens the rubber loop. The finished loop is called the band. It's the skeleton of the giant tire. They hoist it onto a cart and move it to the next station. Stay tuned as they shape and inflate this band of rubber to turn it into a giant tire.
This machine is about to stretch the big band of rubber like an elastic. The machine pivots and its many rollers expand in turn to transfer the band to a spinning drum. The machine pumps air around the protruding rollers to make the transfer easier while the drum turns at a constant speed to aid the process. Once the transfer is complete, the rollers retract and the air escapes. This causes the rubber to shrink to the drum and take its shape. They fold the overlap into the center of the drum. The giant rubber band now has the basic contour of a tire. Next, another machine coats numerous steel wires with rubber, creating strips of rubberized steel. This will be used to make the bead, the part of the tire that sits on the wheel rim. They wind the rubberized steel around a metal wheel up to 20 times to form the bead. They remove the bead and inspect it. Then they pack a thick layer of rubber onto it so it will be easier to shape to the tire. Using a special applicator wheel, they push the bead against the lip of the rubber tire shape. The bead adheres, but it needs to be more solidly attached. A spinning disc forces the bead more firmly to the rubber tire shape. Then, the tire assembler folds back the extra rubber from the tire and wraps it around the bead using sheer physical strength. They install two or three beads on each side of the tire. The multi-roller device takes over from the assembler and folds back extra rubber to lock the beads in place. Next, the tire turns as they wind steel belted rubber around it followed by a continuous strip of ordinary rubber. That strip builds up contours for tread. The assembler then wraps a thick piece of ordinary rubber around the outer edge. This is the tire's sidewall. The spinning disc device presses the sidewall to the tire. This tire is now ready to move on. Here, a huge rubber bladder inflates and deflates as they spray it with a non-stick coating. This bladder will act as the inner part of a mold. They lift the tire onto the deflated bladder. They then pump steam into it, expanding the tire. A metal mold with a tread pattern engraved in it closes around the swelling tire. The tire cooks in this mold for up to 18 hours, causing the rubber to cure. The giant tire pops out of the mold with tread. The brand name and identification numbers have all been molded into the rubber. After cooling, an inspection team examines the giant tire inside and out. And once it gets the okay, it's ready to roll. And with all that deep tread, each giant tire is guaranteed to make a big impression on the job site.